We dear daughter-in-law. Are you busy at the moment? If so, I am really very sorry, but I have a favor to ask of you. I didn't want to ever become a burden to you, so I tried to endure it and figure it out on my own, and... Oh, I feel really awful about this, but I've reached my limits and I'm so cold and hungry. I can't endure this anymore. I really need your help. I have been thinking maybe I should just die and disappear, but... I decided I can't leave this world yet without being able to see my grandchildren grow. I couldn't bear the thought of that either. So here I am in this shameful and embarrassing situation, asking my daughter-in-law for money. Teresa, dear, would you be able to lend me some money? I am so sorry to put you in this situation. I don't know how long it will take, but I will pay back every single penny as soon as I am able to. And I am planning on getting a job and going back to work full time as soon as I find a good job. Oh my gosh. Sharon, please don't talk like that anymore. And please never consider ending your own life ever again. Reading those words was very upsetting. Please do your best to get back to work and I will continue to help you until you have steady income again. But Sharon, I have already been sending you $1,500 per month. Is that still not enough for all of your basic monthly expenses? If that much hasn't been enough, I wish you would have told me sooner. Then how much more do you need per month? What? You say you have been sending $1,500 to me every month. I have never received that much money from you. Sharon, that's impossible. I have been putting the cash into an envelope and giving it to your son to deliver to you every month. Actually, I've been wanting to check in and ask you if $1,500 per month has been enough. But I was worried that directly asking you would make you feel uncomfortable. So I didn't say anything and just kept sending that much to you. So I'm glad you have told me now how your current situation is. Are you sure that you haven't been receiving that much money each month? Of course I am sure. If I had been receiving that much from you all along, I would not be in the situation of wishing I could die while not being able to allow myself to. Along with my monthly social security payment, I was also earning a bit of money from cleaning houses three days a week. But that was barely enough to pay for my rent and utility bills. And I have been sick lately, so I haven't even been able to clean houses. My electricity, gas, and water were all shut off over the past few days. You know, I lost my husband while I was still so young and I raised my son all by myself. I've lived a difficult life up until now. But I had hope that my elderly days would be much better and brighter. I never thought I'd be so miserable. I was in the hospital for a couple days, so all my savings went to pay the hospital bill. But I am still sick and in so much pain I can't even clean houses for the time being. I am so sorry to put all of this on you. I am so ashamed of myself. For the past three months, I have been going to the soup kitchen to be able to eat once a day there. That's all I could afford. I was worried that if I told all of this to you, you would disown me and not allow me to see my granddaughter. So I've been holding this all in all this time. Sharon, come on. Do you think I am some evil witch or something? I would never do such a thing. Well, I heard through the grapevine that you haven't liked me much from the very beginning. And I heard that you said that you didn't ever want to speak with me. Who said that? Was it your son? Anyway, that's not true. Actually, I heard from your son that you were upset about my having a daughter instead of a son. I figured you were just a bit more traditional than others and was hoping I would have a son first. But he said that you were furious and might say a few things to upset me. So he said that I shouldn't talk to you for the time being. No way. That's not true either, Teresa. Whether you were to have a son or a daughter never mattered to me. Either way... He or she is still my grandchild, and that's all that mattered from the start. I know. I was really shocked and didn't believe that you would be like that either. I apologize for having believed him. I don't know why he is doing this, but it is starting to seem like he is playing with us. It's like he is trying to make us argue and have a bad relationship with each other. Then, is it a lie that you went to Hawaii last month to celebrate your birthday? And that you invited my husband, but not me? Of course it is! I can't afford to eat properly, and soon I will run out of medicine and won't be able to afford to buy more. How in the world could I ever afford a trip to Hawaii? 
I swear, Teresa, I never went on any trip with my son last month. Even if he had invited me to go with him, I would have refused if he didn't also take you and my granddaughter along with us. I'm so sorry, Sharon. It looks like I have been misunderstanding a lot about you all this time. No, Teresa, you have no reason to be apologizing right now. Your misunderstandings are not your fault. I'm the one here asking for you to lend me money and giving you a hard time with my shameful situation. I also resented you a lot due to my own misunderstandings. So, the one apologizing and asking for forgiveness should be me, not you. Sharon, where are you right now? Well, my house is so cold right now, it seemed like I was going to freeze to death. So, I was planning on going to your house, but I was afraid it would upset you if I just showed up on your doorstep suddenly asking for money. So, that's why I am texting you from the playground next to your apartment complex right now. Thanks to you. My phone bill has been getting paid, so at least that service hasn't been suspended yet. I am so sorry and ashamed of myself. I can't believe I have become such a burden to you, Teresa. Really, I am so sorry. Please, Sharon, you have no reason to feel sorry or ashamed. Stay where you are. I'll be right out to get you. Patrick, where are you? I told you earlier, didn't I? Mom is getting surgery today. I'm at the hospital with her right now. They're about to take her into the operating room. But what are we going to do? Mom doesn't have any health insurance, so this surgery bill is looking like it is going to be crazy expensive. I'm so sorry for having a poor mother, Teresa. She has always been such a burden to you. Well, as for the bill, it is what it is. But it isn't your mother's fault that she is sick and needs this surgery. She doesn't want the situation any more than the rest of us do. That's my wife. Thanks for always being so kind and understanding, Teresa. So anyway, how much is the surgery going to cost? It looks like we'll have to prepare to spend at least $10,000 up front. It will definitely end up costing more, but I think we should be able to pay an increment starting with $10,000. Didn't you say that you've been putting money in a new account lately? I'm really sorry, but do you think we could use the money from that account? That much? Wow, that's American healthcare for you. I can't believe we need to put up 10 grand. My gosh, she must really be very sick. Maybe I should go to the hospital too and stay with you. Which hospital are you at? I'll drop everything and be right over. Oh no, that's not necessary. Don't worry about me, I'll be fine. And the nurses are here to take care of my mom when she's out of surgery too, you know. Let them do their job. <laughs> I know you're working from home today, but you shouldn't stop work early on short notice like that. And someone is going to need to pick Sammy up from kindergarten in a few hours anyway. I know it seems expensive, but they say it's actually a pretty common and simple surgery. Don't worry about it. How can a $10,000 plus surgery be simple and common? Okay, to be honest, mom said she really doesn't want to see you right now. And the money she's been receiving from you every month hasn't been enough. And now I think she feels super embarrassed because she needs more money every month, plus now she even needs help paying for this surgery. Really, I think she is just feeling too guilty and ashamed to see you. Your poor mother. She must be so thin and frail now. Oh, no, actually, she is quite chubby now. <laughs> she seems to be eating quite well these days thanks to the money you've been sending her. Oh, really? Are you sure the chubby one you're speaking of right now is not actually you, Patrick? If your so-called chubby mother is in the hospital currently, then please tell me. Who is the woman sitting next to me right now? The woman sitting next to me right now is as thin as skin and bones and pale as a ghost. She is so malnourished that her hair is even falling out. What the heck are you talking about? I already know the answer, so I'll tell you. Your poor mother is sitting next to me at our house right now. Are you going to say it's not her and that she has a twin or something? No way. That can't be true. Mom is here at the hospital with me right now. Oh my god. You've been caught red-handed. You're still going to continue lying? Your poor mother looks like a skeleton right now. Her mental and physical condition is awful. It's snowing like crazy and freezing cold out there. And here she walked all the way to our apartment with workout sneakers and holes in her clothes and jacket. This is all extremely embarrassing for her. Her situation has become so bad that she came here asking for help. She told me that she has even been considering committing suicide. 
I can feel this poor woman's pain and misery so much I myself am feeling sick about it all. How dare you mistreat and neglect your own mother in this way? Your mother did her best to eat well and keep herself fit and healthy while you were in her womb. After painfully going through labor and giving birth to you, she breastfed and raised you as if you were her little prince. When you were still a child, your father passed away unexpectedly, and yet she continued to work hard to earn the money to make sure that you could grow up comfortably and go to college. After all that this woman has endured and done for you, do you seriously not have a single grain of appreciation or even a feeling of apology towards her? Isn't it so pathetic that she can't eat properly or even afford to go to the hospital and get medicine because of her ungrateful, good-for-nothing son? What the hell did you do with the money that was meant for your mother? You better tell me right now. Ugh, oh, fine. I needed to use it here and there. Women have no idea how much money men need for their basic necessities and social lives. <laughs> and women don't need as much money for their basic necessities and social lives either. I know from now on, I'll be resenting you for the rest of my life. But if you continue to lie, we're finished. So you better give me the straight up honest answer right now. Where exactly did all of the money that I have been giving to you to give to your mother for the past three years go? Did you seriously spend it all yourself? <laughs> I've already told you. Yeah, I spent it all. And if I tell you exactly what I spent it on, will you forgive me anyway? Just cut the crap and tell me. For a very long time, I've been in love with another woman. When I was a kid, she lived next door and we became childhood friends. All of a sudden, she became the most lovely and beautiful girl in the world. So I started having a crush on her in middle school. When we were both 11 years old, my dad passed away. So my mom and I had to move out and we left the neighborhood. I was so upset and mad about that. I didn't want to move away because I thought I would never be able to see her again. I cried and threw a fit for weeks. Every time I thought of her, I was so depressed. But then, as if we are destined to be together, a few years ago I went to hang out with some of my old elementary and middle school friends in that town. I just happened to see her in a cafe. I sat down and talked to her about this and that and found out that her husband had recently divorced her and she was struggling to raise their kid on her own. That reminded me of the painful childhood I had while growing up without my own dad. So, I wanted to help her and give her some hope. Yeah. I gave her most of the money, but not all of it. I gave maybe a third or so of it to my mom. So you continued meeting with that woman and giving her my money without me knowing? All of that money was meant for your own mother, who has also been struggling this whole time. I earned that money on my own blood, sweat, and tears. Not you. How dare you give it away as you please? And of all things, you give it to another woman whom you've just confessed you loved since childhood? If you love that woman so much... Why haven't you asked me for a divorce and run off with her? I guess a leech like you wouldn't think of doing something like that. I'm really sorry, Teresa. Really, I am. I really didn't want a divorce, so I didn't even think of it. I didn't want a divorce to hurt our daughter. Are the only people to be hurt by all of this your daughter and me? If you ask me, the person that's hurting the most from your disgusting actions is your mother. Your mother says she has a few words to say to you. Here she is now. What? Has she been seeing this conversation the entire time? Hello, Patrick. Mom, I'm so sorry. Please try to understand and see it from my side. How dare you? I never imagined that I would give birth to and raise up such a selfish and shameless devil like you. I spent my life slaving away and breaking my back so that you always had enough to eat, clean clothes, and a good education. You apparently have no idea how much I suffered and struggled to raise you and give you everything you needed. This just goes to show that blood is blood and the saying as the trunk so the branch is true after all. Even through all of my efforts to raise you up with a clear head on your shoulders with pure and proper values and morals, you've gone and committed the same sin as your rotten father. Is this a trick of fate or a prank from the heavens? Mom, what the heck are you talking about right now? I'm not understanding any of this. The girl you've been having an affair with is Sarah, right? Oh, you remember her. How the hell could I not? That girl's mother had an affair with your father. One summer night, to avoid being seen, the two of them went to have some fun drinking and smoking marijuana by the river there in town. Your father is dead and gone now, 
But how could I ever forget all this? Your idiotic father, who didn't even know how to swim, slipped and fell into the river. And while he was splashing about yelling out for help, that girl's mother ran off for fear that she would be caught cheating on me with your father. But as she was running away, that brainless tramp pulled the ring he gave her off of her finger and dropped it by the riverbank. And that is how your father's death and their affair went viral throughout the town. Is that really what happened? Dad really had an affair with Sarah's mother? And Dad really drowned because her mom didn't try to save him? Why do you think I wanted to leave that disgusting trash town so quickly? In that wretched town lived that snake who led your father to cheat on us. Then left your father to drown in the river through her selfish inhumanity. How could I ever find any bit of peace again while living there? Anyway, look at yourself. You are no better than your father and that wretched tramp slut mother. Your wife has been breaking her back to take care of you, your daughter, and even me, her mother-in-law. I am not even her birth mother, yet she treats me better than you, my own son. Have you no shame and disgust in your actions? How can I ever think of you as being my son again? I cannot. Mom, I'm so sorry. What I've done is wrong. Please forgive me. Please. Huh. You should be asking for forgiveness from your wife, not me. No, actually. It disgusts me more to see you beg for forgiveness from anyone like this. You're a rotten, worthless, parasitic piece of trash that doesn't deserve an ounce of forgiveness from anyone. The only way for you to start cleansing yourself of your sins from now on is to do as your soon-to-be ex-wife wishes quietly and obediently. After that, I obviously filed for a divorce from my low-life ex-husband as soon as possible. I am receiving a hefty amount of alimony and child support from him. I am even receiving some money from a lawsuit I filed and won against his trampy mistress. That jerk also had to give up the everything and anything he had gotten out of the divorce agreement and sell it to be able to pay back the $54,000 of my money that was originally meant for his mother, which was ruled as having been stolen over the past three years. I wanted to give all of the money to my ex-mother-in-law. However, she felt so awful about this all that she refused to accept it. So we agreed on splitting it 50-50. Speaking of my poor ex-mother-in-law, our relationship actually still remains. She was able to recover her health and start enjoying her elderly years while living in a great 50-plus community. She even recently opened up a small flower shop nearby. I take my daughter to see her often, too. Sharon says that she has completely disowned my ex-husband and hasn't seen him since the divorce. I'm sure he is the one struggling now. Although her son hurt the three of us so much, we seem to find strength in each other. I plan to keep this relationship with Sharon and allow her to spend time with her one and only granddaughter. Thank you so much for watching and listening. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe for more. Also, don't forget to leave a comment about your thoughts and opinions on this story below. Do you like the shorter format or our longer stories? Or maybe both. Let us know!